Hey guys, welcome to How to Wire It. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to wire up a DC motor for single direction control. In a future video, I'll be showing you how to wire up a motor for bi-directional control so you can control it in either direction. But for today, we're going to keep it simple and just wire this up so they can spin in one direction. Now the parts that you're going to need are obviously a DC motor. You're also going to need a transistor. This is a 2N2222 transistor, but a 3904 or really any general purpose NPN transistor will work. You'll need a resistor, a current limiting resistor, and what I have here is a 1K resistor, although honestly anything between about 220 ohms and 10K will work. And you'll need some jumper wires to hook everything up. So. Let's get into how this is all wired. So I'm not going to start with the motor. I'm actually going to start with the transistor here. Now we're going to use this transistor exactly the same way that we use the transistors in the RGB strip video. So if you haven't taken a look at that, definitely go check that out. It's on screen now. Go ahead and watch it and I'll go and I go a little bit more in depth of what this transistor is doing in that video. But basically, we're going to use this transistor as an electronic switch. So the Arduino by itself cannot directly power the motor, just as we cannot directly power a light bulb using our bodies. But we use this transistor here to act as a switch, just like when you switch the light on in your house. You're not actually powering the light, but you are actuating the switch that powers the light. So... That's what this transistor here does. It basically takes the load off of the Arduino and puts it onto the transistor. So the three pins of the transistor from, there's a flat side here, from the flat side facing towards you. On the left you have the emitter, the center pin is the base, and the right pin is the collector. So the emitter always connects to ground. And the way I remember that is the power flows in through the collector and is emitted out through the emitter. So I'm going to take a ground wire here and I'm going to connect that to the emitter. The next thing I want to connect is the wire that connects the transistor's base, that's the center pin, to the Arduino. So I'm going to pop the wire into a pin on the Arduino and I'm not going to directly connect the wire to the transistor. I'm going to put it adjacent to the transistor and I'm going to connect the wire to the transistor using this resistor here. And this is acting as a current limiting resistor and it's basically preventing basically the same issue that would the driving this motor from the Arduino would have. The transistor can draw a lot more power than the Arduino wants to give out. So we use the solar resistor here to bridge between the Arduino and the transistor to allow enough power to flow thr through the transistor to activate it as a switch, but not enough that it hurts the Arduino. So the last part here, the motor, we're going to connect its negative side, its black wire, to the collector on the transistor. And then lastly, we're going to take this little red jumper wire here and connect that to the positive side of the motor and into our positive power rail here. So basically what's going to happen is the transistor is acting as what we call a low side switch. It's switching on and off power connected to ground. So power will, there will always be five volts flowing into the motor, but the reason that the motor won't always run is because the transistor is either going to open or close that connection to ground. And as you know, if you have no completed circuit, no circuit that goes from positive to negative, no power will flow. So you'll have power potential coming into the motor at all times, but the transistor is going to be what actually switches the motor on and off by connecting and disconnecting the motor's connection to ground. So now that we have this all wired up, let's go and just glance quickly at the code that can get that will get you up and running with this motor. 
So here you can see all I've done is I've just loaded up the basic Arduino Blink program. And this is all we really need to at least test the functionality of our motor. So we've set the pin mode of whatever pin we want to use on my Arduino here, on this pin here. This is pin 10. And we tell it to be an output because we want to control something. We want to output to the world. And then we just have this little loop here of digital write 10 high, turn the motor on, wait a second, and digital write 10 low, turn the motor off. And you can see I didn't even bother changing the comments here. This is just the basic. You can find this right under uh, examples, basic, blink. So if I go ahead and plug in the Arduino now, you can see the motor twitching once a second and that twitch is actually getting turned on. The one second isn't enough time for that motor to spin down completely, but you can see that it's it's twitching about once a second. And if you listen close, you might even be able to hear the small whine of this motor. So that's really all you have to do to get this running. Now, if you, let's say that you want to have variable speed, you don't just want to turn the motor on and off. Well, assuming you've plugged in to your Arduino pin, you've plugged your transistor into a PWM capable pin, so on your regular Arduinos, that's something like pins four and five and eight or nine or something. I honestly don't remember. Look at your own Arduinos and find out. But if you want to have variable speed control, you are completely able to do that using PWM. And if you go to uh, file examples under analog, you'll find the fading sketch. And this sketch here, as long as you change your pin and maybe you rename it to motor pin or something, this is an example of how to fade an LED bright and dim, but the same exact code can be applied to a transistor with a motor. So you can have variable speed control or just on or off. And yeah, that's all there really is to wiring up a motor to a transistor. If you have larger motors, if you have something that needs to run on, you know, 12 volts at a couple of amps, this little transistor is probably not going to do you very good. You'll probably want to use a MOSFET at that point. But for small motors, for anything small, little desk fan maybe, or little robot of some sort, you can definitely get away with using just a little NPN transistor like, like I have here. So, yeah, that's all there is for today's episode of How to Wire It. Uh, if you like these videos, definitely give a thumbs up to this one and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to reach out to me, feel free to definitely leave a comment on this video. But you can also find me at itkindaworks.com and on Twitter at itkindaworksinc. All right, well, I'll see you guys next time.